Um, some new policy coming from World Rugby, then we also have some USA Rugby resources and policies internally. So uh, give us the highlights of, of World Rugby's uh, new policy. Sure. The, the policy, um, this has been an evolving process as we learn more and more about concussion specifically. And it's been in effect uh, since before I started, which was 2003 with USA Rugby, and it's evolved to its current state. Mm -hmm. And some of those tenets of that have, you know, have remained the same, which is when in doubt, sit them out. If you have a suspected injury, remove that athlete from play, whether it's training or a match. Um, but along with that now, there's some more stringent regulations that are out there to follow. And that involves if you are a, an adult rugby player, meaning 19 and older, mm -hmm. we advise that you have, uh, you're removed from play. And of course, if you're diagnosed with a concussion, you are of a one week stand down period, followed by a graduated return to play before you can return to play. And of course you need to be seen by a medical provider, cleared by a medical provider, and sent to free. In regards to the youth levels, which is 18 and younger, the same exact policy removed when in doubt, sit them out. But there's a two week stand out period as opposed to a one. Still go through the graduated return to play, sent to free, cleared by a healthcare provider before you return. The reason for the extended period, it's a developing brain, and we know it needs more protection than the adult at this time, and we're erring on the side of caution. Sure. So I'm a, I'm a college rugby player. I've, I've gotten my concussion on my Saturday. What does my next, you know, let's say, week or two look like? So you've been, you've been diagnosed with a concussion on a Saturday. You would sit out for the entire following week, which would carry you to the next Saturday. At that time... Practices and games. At that practices point. and yeah. games, everything you're out. That's the recommendation. At that point, you can then based on your symptoms allowing you to begin your graduated return to play uh, program, which should take about five days. We have a day rest in between each step. And on the sixth day you could turn. So effectively you would miss one game and return the following, pending you were symptom free and cleared by a provider. Okay. And so at youth, we're talking about that same stand down period, only it's going to be probably a two game or two week a period. Two week, exactly, it'd be a two week miss stand down before you begin the graduated return to play. And of course we want the healthcare provider or someone help guiding that return to play program in that process. So we've also rolled out some new resources on USA Rugby's website. Um, talk a little bit about what those congressional resources yeah. are. Yeah, and so to help with that breakdown of what's my role, because it may be easy for me and you to talk about it, but uh, what if I'm the parent? How do, how do I react and what do I do for my child who's had a concussion? Or um, what if I'm the player and what if I'm the official, the referee in this case? And so we've laid it out these new guidelines on a spreadsheet of how you should react and whether your role as a vested member of the game, whether you're a coach, a referee, a player, or a parent, and how you react. So it's going to be a nice little schematic that um, our membership will have access to. Talk a little bit about teammates. So I'm, I'm on the field and I see a teammate that might be illustrating some symptoms of, of concussion. Um, talk about some responsibilities on that level. Yeah, it, it's a tough one, but it's, it's, it's so important that as a teammate, as a valued member, we, we're, our sport is so unique in the fact that we're, we have this tight bond and we know we win and lose as a team. Mm -hmm. And this is the same thing. Um, it's more important than a sprained ankle and getting along with that or a knock to the, the knee. We need to get this player off the field. The rule is, if you're injured and have any signs of concussion, you need to remove from play. So if you have a teammate that says, wow, I'm a little dizzy, I got a, just got wrapped in the head hard, help him make the decision. Notify the coach or the official, time out, mm -hmm. let's get this player off the field. And, you know, concussions aren't cool, that's the bottom line. Sure. So there's also then a bit of, you know, buzz out there about the new, the, uh, the brain bin is what they're calling it. So the, we see it internationally. Um, I guess talk to us a little bit about what that, that process is. Sure. This has been an ongoing process for us that we've been working closely with World Rugby on implementing. And the correct term is now the HIA, which stands for the Head Injury Assessment. Mm -hmm. Previous, previously, it was called the PSCA, um, Pitch Site Concussion Assessment. Um, to, but in simple, here's, here's the rules around it. At this point, it is only approved for elite competition. And it has to, has a, a whole checklist of items that you have to do to, to, to be approved by you, World Rugby in order to apply it. At this time in the United States, there's no use of the HIA at any level except for our elite senior international matches. 
That would include the USA Sevens event. It would include Eagles Home International Test, um, and that's with men's and women's, mm -hmm. as, as well as the uh, Atlanta Sevens for the uh, HSBC World Series. So at this time, the HIA, the brain bin, whatever you want to call it, is not approved for use at any level in the United States except for that elite international level. That's Thanks for clarifying that, important for the community to hear. Um, so talk a little bit more about the policy making standpoint. So USA Rugby has the concussion page on, on its website with some more information in there. Um, what if I have some questions that maybe aren't clarified in the website? So if there's questions that you don't have, uh, you have after you, we, you have the resources, the policy, the regulation, the first step would be to email myself directly, mm -hmm. mkeating at usarugby.org. I'd be more than happy to help answer your question. If I don't have the answer, I'll be able to sort the answer um, that you're looking for.